Hi, I'm Dr. Kathy Sinclair, and on behalf of Whitmix, today I'm going to demonstrate to you the use of this Slidematic face bow with the use of their new Quick Lock Toggle Assembly. So let's get started. First you need to make a reference point on your patient. This is done using the included ruler. The reference point is actually done by using the right lateral incisor, so I'm going to have you open for me. Perfect. And we're just going to place the point right at the edge of the light right lateral incisor and make a small mark on the nose. If you have an edentulous patient, you can do the same thing just using the lips at rest. The next part of the face bow assembly we're going to be going over today is the bite fork. With the Whitmix Dinar Slidematic face bow, there are two bite fork assemblies that you can have. The first one is the tradi traditional one, which many of you are familiar with. And the one that we will be demonstrating today is the quick lock toggle assembly. And using this, similar to the previous bite fork assembly, the bite fork is held in place with a fast setting PVS bite material. Today's material that we're using is Exabyte 2 NDS by GC. And in doing so, you want to make sure you cover all sections of the bite fork. And in placing this, there is a notch on the anterior segment which you will line up with the midline of the patient. And we'll have you open for me. Perfect. Fine, sorry. After holding this for about 15 seconds, you should get an initial set. So as you can see, we have the midline lined up with the anterior notch of the bite fork. And as this material sets, we're actually going to have Lauren bite down on a cotton roll. And if you have an assistant with you, she can aid in this positioning. That'll be open for me. Perfect. I'm just going to be close together lightly. And that is great. The third part of the face bow assembly that we're going to be going over is the ear bow. This ear bow will actually go into the ear canals or the external auditory meatus of the patient and the assembly will actually fit right into the internal attachment of the ear bow. So for this next step, we will actually use the patient's assistance to help guide the ear bow into the auditory meatus. So Lauren, if I could get you to... How's that feel? It's fine. Okay, good. From there, we will loosen the second screw and make sure that this first screw segment lines up with the bite fork. Many times, this assembly is put on in one piece, and it's a lot easier for the operator or assistant to do this in one step instead of multiple steps. Once the bite forks is attached to the face bow assembly, we will then check our point of reference, which is used using this side piece here. And again, I'm gonna have Lauren help me out here a little bit. And Lauren, I'm gonna have you sit up straight for me. Perfect. And it's important that your patient is sitting upright so you don't get a canted incisal edge as well as your reference points are not skewed. So Lauren, I'm going to have you hold that for me. Perfect. And I'm going to have you sit up straight again. So when using the level, make sure that the level is parallel with the pupillary line of the patient. And we will then tighten the second screw on the toggle lock assembly. We are now completed with everything for the patient. And removal is fairly easy. All you do is loosen this screw here in the, on the earbow, And it will come out out of there and then I'm gonna have you open for me Lauren. One of the great features of the Dinar Slidematic Face Bow by Whitmix is the removability of the ear bow from the face bow assembly which is fairly easy. You just unscrew this section from the face bow and you can remove the toggle assembly right off and you're ready for transfer of your maxillary cast to your articulator. And finally, we're gonna go over a few tips that are very important with the use of the face bow. Number one, make sure you always use the reference ruler that is included in the kit. Number two, 
make sure the patient is always sitting up, never lying back in the chair. Number three, if the patient has longer hair, make sure it's pulled back behind their ears so you can see the ear bow going into the external auditory meatus. And finally, if you're ever in doubt, have the patient stand and take a picture and send that to the laboratory. If you have any questions on this instrument or any other Whitmix products, please visit their website at www.whitmix.com.